are you guys doing today? First of all, let's give it a big round of applause for Mr. Moore. He did a great job. You took some of my lines, so I'm a little offended right now. So I'm a, little, I'm a little bit caught off. My name is Marklin T. Johnson. I'm an entrepreneur. I have Real Talk Media. Real Talk Media simply for me was a passion that I had and I didn't even realize how passionate I was about it. Um, I kind of fell into it, but not really. I've been trying to do it my whole entire life, but I always had people telling me no. People telling me, I actually had people tell me to be quiet because I used to talk so much. That's exactly what happened. Can you click to the next one? Hold on. All right. It was a long road to me being an entrepreneur. Hit it one more time. I went to five schools, got an Associates of Applied Science. I worked 14 years of corporate America, and I worked 12 different jobs, and I was miserable as you would not believe. Most people get a job in corporate America, Gen Mills, Target, they're excited. I'm going to do this. This is what's going to happen. I would get a job, and I would be like, this is all that's there for me. That's all I'm ever going to be. I'm not knocking school. But a lot of people think, oh, I got to go to school. I got to go to school. But like he was saying, you have a passion that's burning deep inside of you that you really want to do, and you're scared. So you go to school. The path that I was always taught, my dad was an educator, is the best thing. I graduated from high school. What are you going to do? I don't know what I'm going to do. You're going to go to school. You're going to go to school. So I went to cooking school because I used to watch cooking channels. I'm like, I love cooking school. I love watching cooking channel. Great. I was in cooking school for two trimesters, was really good at it, but once again, bored as you would not believe. It didn't challenge me. I had no motivation to cook for people. Hardest job you'll ever do. So if you're cooking, you better be into cooking for people. Can you hit the next one? Does anybody know what an entrepreneur actually is? Someone who invests in a business. You're right along the lines. And anyone else? Yeah, like, um, like start a business or like some type of um, like product or something. A little bit. You're close. Click the next one. Entrepreneur, entrepreneurship, the process of starting a business or start a company or other organization. The entrepreneur develops a business plan, acquires the human and other required resources, and is fully responsible for its success or failure. Most people that are entrepreneurs are starting businesses that it's something that they love. Like he said, he does health and nutrition and helps people. He's an entrepreneur. He could be an entrepreneur. Whatever you do, whatever your skill is, makes you an entrepreneur if you want to go out and bring it out to the masses and start your own business. Some people call a small business owner. You're still an entrepreneur. I wanted to show these to you guys so you guys get an idea. You're like, oh, I'm too young. I can't do it. This guy, Fraser Darty, began started at 814 making jam with his grandmother. Making jam. Simple as that. How many of you cook with your mom or your dad like every night or every day? He took that making home jams and started making concoctions with it. Let's try this. Let's try that. He turned it into a $1.2 million in sales business at 14. So I want you guys to understand, don't be dismayed and think I've got to be an adult. A lot of you guys have passion. Who said that they wanted to do video games? You can start it now. Don't think, oh my God, I can't do it. Start it now. There's a lot of things you could do with that. Fraser is quoted as saying, I can't be preoccupied with the money. He just likes to make jam. Start it with his grandmother. That's all he likes to do is make jam. The money, for you guys that are like, well, where's the money in being an entrepreneur? The money follows you if you follow your dream. And a lot of entrepreneurs fall. There's a lot of guys, if you ask them about their businesses, they start at five, six, seven. There's a, one guy I read about started 10 businesses, failed. His 11th business, he's a millionaire. You can't be scared to fail. You can't be scared to say, I can't do it. The next one. This one is my favorite. How many of you guys remember MySpace? <laughs> in 2004, 14-year-old Ashley Qualls launched whateverlife.com just to show off the design that she taught herself from designing it. On MySpace, you were actually able to change your default page. So if you were into sports, if you were into music, you could change the layout of it and make it look different. She took that passion, and by word of mouth, her page began buzzing. She had companies reaching out to her to 
advertise on her page. So she had a website. They were reaching her because of how much traffic she had on her page. One company offered to buy her page for $1.5 million and a car of her choice for $100,000. In 2006, she purchased a $250,000 home for her parents. The reason why, guys, I'm telling you this one, the uh, reason why I love this, this lady was 15 years old and she was a millionaire from following her passion. All she loved to do was write code and design. So re people reaching out to her, can you write this code for me? And she didn't charge a lot. So much traffic being driven, she went ahead and just made herself a millionaire. Go to the next one. This one's really good. She started when she was 10 years old. Juliet Bridback, Bridak, Brindak, whatever the last name is. I mess up names all the time, please excuse me. She began drawing a group of made up characters she called Cool Girls, including a primary character named Miss O. At 16, she launched a social networking site for tweens called Miss O and Friends. Miss O and Friends owns Juliet Money through advertising revenue and is ranked the third largest girls only website in 2011. The site now generates 10 million unique visitors per month and is worth an estimate made it $15 million and continues to rely on word of mouth and very little advertising for success. Has anybody heard of Miss O and Friends? No. The reason why I did that is I want you guys to understand you're not going to hear about the people that are really doing well because a lot of them are not, you know, rappers, they're not entertainers. What they're doing is going out and following a dream and following a passion and pushing it to every level they can. That's what I, I'm trying to instill in you guys. Find a dream, be passionate about it, and follow it no matter what. Like I said, people told me no all the time. Passion, a strong and barely controllable emotion. For years, I always wanted to talk to people. I engage people. I was always complimented, even when I was in school. What grade do you teach, really? In eighth grade on up, you speak very well. You're very articulate. You're, very, you're, you're easy to talk to adults as well as talk to your fellow classmates. You should follow something in that pursuit. My dad would always teach me, shut up, get your education, and get yourself a job and be miserable in your job because you could pay bills. That's what I was taught. That's what I did. Go to the next one. These are some of the qualities of an entrepreneur. One, you find the gap. The ability just to see an opportunity. How many people in here have ever repaired a computer? at all. Wow. You repaired one? I plugged in. I plugged it in. <laughs> <laughs> so have you ever actually like repaired one though? No. How many of you guys have iPhones? Android. Android, that's fine. How many of you guys have actually had to repair your iPhone or an Android like it crashed and you had to redo it? You've done it? Uh. Or you had to teach your dad or your mom how to load up an application? You are now entrepreneurs. Oh, what? You're now entrepreneurs. Imagine how many people don't know what they're doing with their cell phones. I'm 42. My dad was 80 years old, God rest his soul. Didn't know what to do with an Android. I have a Samsung Android. I had to teach him how to do it. You're now an entrepreneur. People want to do it. You can, actually, you can actually put out your services and say, I could teach you how to do that. Big market for you right now is the 80 year olds, the 90 year olds that still want to be in touch with the world, but don't know how to do it. You guys are at that age where technology for you is nothing. I, techno I had computers, I had to learn technology. I didn't really start getting into technology till I was like 21, 22 years old. You guys have had technology with you since you were born. You're ahead of the game by so many means. They drive for daylight. Oh, no, you're fine. That's fine. These are just a day drive for daylight. Successful entrepreneurs focus on the future. They're not swayed by what's in the past. They're constantly, hey, this is the next big thing. This is the next thing I'm going for. How many people have ever taken the time to say, I think this is going to be something big down the line? Like you want to be a dancer. The new, da the new latest and craziest dance wave. What's taken off? The thing. Hmm? The whip. The whip. I've never heard of the whip. Really? Never heard of the whip. Okay. I mean, I have heard of the whip, but that's another conversation for another day. But my point is the whip. Okay, you could go on the internet, show people how to do the whip. You are now an entrepreneur and you're doing something that you love. Put it to some music, edit it. You are now an entrepreneur. You're making money because you got over a million hits and you're now teaching people how to do a dance craze that'll probably be out in six months, replaced by the whip plus two. 
that's what entrepreneurship is about. You see an opportunity. What they also do, ah, come back. <laughs> I'm going to stop hitting this thing, I swear to God. They fly the OODA, the OODA loop. And OODA loop is an acronym for observe, orient, decide, and act. This means continually updating their assumptions and moving quickly from one descent, dissension and iteration to the next. You want to do the whip. You find out, what is it called? I said you want to do the whip, the dance. So now all of a sudden you hear a new dance after you made a million dollars. So now you're like, you know what? There's another dance craze coming out. I want to do that too. But I want to add something crazy into it. I mean, think about all the people you go to YouTube and they're doing the most ridiculous dances. I've got to keep this PG because you're kids. But think about how many times you go on YouTube and you see twerking. Right? Like literally twer twerking is so bad. You hashtag twerking, you'll find anything on YouTube on twerking. That's how big it is. You do the whip, you go big. And I'm just using you as an example. You like the game. So now all of a sudden you go on and you record all your gaming. You start learning techniques and games that are absolutely no one knows. So you start doing that, you put it on the internet, you start showing people. People start calling you and consulting with you, how do I do this, how do I do that? You know what, I'm gonna have to charge you $15 an hour in order for you to learn how to do this. I gotta charge $15, think about how many gamers, and I'm gonna give you a great example. A Couple of months ago they had a big gaming convention in Los Angeles, grand prize was $50,000. You got guys that game all year round now, and gaming now is competition. Gaming now is like playing basketball, it's like playing football. You got people that go to college to game. Simple as that. That's my point about entrepreneurship. It's everywhere in your life, and you just have to be wide open to see it. Next one, fail wisely. I have failed at four different adventures in my life. Why? Because I kept trying. I wanted to be a salesman. Go in a job interview. You're great at talking to people. Oh, you're going to sell some knives. You're going to be great. Sell knives. I had no passion for sell. Why do I want to sell people knives? Because they can cut. <laughs> Guess what? I could care less. That was the problem. The other thing was... Uh, Who's going to eat a tomato bowl, though? Yeah, you're right. The other thing was selling vacuum cleaners. How many people could think that you could be successful at selling vacuum cleaners? <laughs> If you, you guys are a little bit older, there used to be a commercial that the guy used to put his finger foot in the door, throw dirt on the floor, and say, what are you going to use to pick that up? And he would bring out his vacuum cleaner and start vacuuming it up. I didn't want to throw no dirt on anybody, because in my neighborhood, I might get punched out for that. You throw dirt on my rug, and it usually was a white plush rug. So I was guaranteed if my vacuum cleaner didn't pick it up, I was in some trouble. So that didn't work. I tried my hand at doing... Um, a few other things, teaching people like lessons on how to do social media and stuff like that. My, I love social media. My passion wasn't there the way it needed to be. Going to go forward. These are the jobs I had. I was a desktop support agent at all these jobs. After working in corporate America for 12 years, once again, I had no passion for it. I was a desktop agent. I'm not telling you not to go to corporate America. There's a lot of people who said that they were studious and loved school. Which one? You would probably make great, you'd probably be great in corporate America, and you would probably be even better as a manager, executive manager. You might even make it up to CEO. The reason why I tell you that is a lot of people in corporate America enjoy that type of controlled environment. They know when their paycheck is coming in, they know that they're going to do well, and they accelerate at the bottom line, which is success for the company. So don't think of yourself as not being able to. And the even better part about it, you understand processes. You could take those processes and on a side business, start teaching people that are small business owners how to use those processes to make their business better. Once again, you become an entrepreneur. You're able to take yourself to another level. No passion. What was I going to do for a job? How was I going to make money? Because I've been doing corporate America, but I was bored of it. Social media came in place. I started on my, I started on MySpace, had a little bit of Twitter. As you guys could tell, I talk a lot. So how am I going to talk a lot in 140 characters? And you got to do it all day because you know how the Twitter feed works. The answer was Facebook. The reason why Facebook, you can write long dialogues and diatrobes, and I am a talker, I tell jokes, I tell inter intricate pieces about my opinions about things. What I didn't realize was the power I had. I had started, at, before Facebook limited at 5,000, 
You used to be able to add whoever you want it. Didn't make a difference of friends or not. I started just putting out weird stuff about politics, relationships, sports, whatever. People started responding to me. People I didn't know started liking it and responding to me. I go into a guy's shop. I'm selling credit cards. How many people have seen the credit card swipe machines? Uh I'm doing that as a job. I want to tell you it's the most miserable job I've ever had in my life. I've got to go into someone's business and convince them to come off the machine they're on and use my machine so that I can earn a living. Miserable. Point being, the guy comes in, he goes, you've got a talent. I follow you on Facebook. I didn't know this guy followed me on Facebook. He goes, every time you write something, people love it. Every time you say something, people love it. They, even if they hate you, they're responding to what you say. I think you need to follow that up and you need to create a series for yourself. Eh, I'm kind of reluctant. I could care less. The next thing you know, what I've discovered out of that was that on CNN, a guy said, I'm making $200,000 a year by putting videos on YouTube. That was his job. Light bulb went off. I can get in front of a camera. I got cameras right now. I don't care about sitting in front of a camera, but who was gonna teach myself? I had to teach myself, I bought hand cams. Those are a little bit more professional. I bought hand cams. I had to teach myself how to work with the hand cams, teach myself how to edit. I had to teach myself, you know, the way to talk in front of things, the way, how to be in front of you guys like this. Go to the next one. This was my dream. How many people know this guy? Yes, I I love him. He's been on TV for 25 years. How many people know him? Uh, Montel Williams. Montel Williams is not on air anymore, but my friends used to always joke and say, you're going to be the next Montel. Isn't that the credit card guy? Yes, he is. Who's this? Geraldo Rivera. Anybody recognize Ricky Lake? But you all should know her. Oprah. Oprah Winfrey. I wanted to be these people. Here's the thing. When you're not in the business, you're wondering how are you going to do it? How are you going to create it? How are you going to become a radio TV personality? Internet. On the internet, you could be whatever you want. You've got YouTube. You've got blogtalkradio.com. You can create your own path and become what you want to become if you want to go to radio and TV personality. I became a radio TV personality. Go to the next one. So today, I'm an entrepreneur. People pay me to record videos for them. People pay me to edit for them. People pay me to host shows for them. Uh, One of my base dreams has always been to be a public speaker and be able to come to not only kids but adults and motivate them to follow their dream. Why? I had someone motivate me to follow my dream. I had someone motivate me to step up and become something bigger than whatever I thought. Did you watch like those videos on YouTube, like the motivational ones? No. With like, oh, you didn't watch those? No. Those are pretty good, man. They are. I will tell you this. <laughs> How many guys know Medea, the Medea character, Tyler oh, yeah. Perry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. He has a stunt double. The stunt double's name is Shed G. So I lived in Mini. I'm in. I lived in Minneapolis for nine years. Shed G saw what I was doing. We had mutual friends. He says, "I want you to come out and I want you to do some filming for me." He taught me one following up what my passion was, because I was reluctant. And that's one thing you can't be when you want to be an entrepreneur and follow your passion. You can't be reluctant. You have to be very, I'm going to do it, and write out a game plan. But Shedji took me. He guided me. He showed me little things. Next thing you know, for six months, I was on a radio doing the news. That's what following your passion is about. You don't know where you're going to end up. I started, I actually ended up liking editing video. And I started to get pretty good at it. But then all of a sudden, someone saw me on video and said, why are you trying to be in back of the camera when you need to be in front of the camera? Once again, I didn't think I was meant to be in front of the camera because I started falling in love with the editing. But the entrepreneurship in me and my passion was leading me to be in front of the camera. And that's what you guys can't be scared of. If it seems like this is my vision, this is where I want to go, don't be scared to say, you know what? I'm going to go here. I'm going to go in this direction. Because once again, you're following your dream. You're following your passion. Is there one after that? No. There's not. Any questions? Or did I just bore you all to death? That was a pretty good talk. Yeah, Yeah, I like that. So uh, let me ask you this. Like, he already asked some of you guys, like, what was your passion? When I was your age, I actually wanted to be a stockbroker. 
I followed, um, there was a show on TV called Family Ties. No, was it Family Ties with Alex P. Keaton? Yeah. Family Ties. Alex P. Keaton was a cool dude that wore, he looked like him, and he had a briefcase. I used to carry a briefcase to school. In high school. In high school, I carried a briefcase. I wanted to be Alex P. Keaton. I stunk at math. Mm. Math was my, you want to be a stockbroker, you better be good at math. I hated math. I don't know why. Now I need to know math because I got to count my money. I got to know how interest rates work, but I hated math. But once again, you know, fell off, kept falling off. This is the stuff that always kept me because technically speaking, watching TV, you want to be a TV personality. So maybe I really want to be on TV and didn't even realize it. So that's it. How many of you guys know exactly what you want to be? I want to work for this company called Rockstar Games. Okay. You're how old? 14. You're 14 years old. In order to work for them, what do you want to do for them? Uh, um, like, uh, like design the game and stuff. What are you doing right now to put yourself in that, in that category? Playing games. Okay, but besides that? Uh, uh, I mean... The reason why I'm asking you that, go on the internet, go to Barnes & Nobles, Look up Game Design 101. I guarantee you, you learn HTML, Java, simple code, little things like that, that you're gonna say, oh, that's complicated. Pick up anything you wanna know, pick up, what I learned out of that, picked up a book in YouTube. Everything I wanted to learn about video editing, pick up a book in YouTube. That's all I did. I ended up going to a school called the Connecticut School of Broadcasting. And I learned more, because I learned the tricks of the trade. I learned the tricks as far as, when you want to write a story, this is the way it needs to go. When you want to edit, this is the way you want to properly edit in order to keep people's eyes on it. But I still was able to pick up a book and learn the basics. So I'm urging you, go and go to Barnes & Nobles, pick up a book, HTML 101. It'll teach you the basics of it. You have a computer in your home, right? Yeah. How many of you guys don't have a computer in your home? Exactly, you all have a computer in home. You all have the ability, anything that's computer related, to get to it, and learn it. Anybody else knows what they actually want to do? Because it's going to change. You're 14. It's going to change a lot. I want to be something. Hmm? I want to be a professional soccer player. You want to be a professional soccer player? Yes. How much do you play? How much soccer do you play now? <laughs> how many camps do you go to? <laughs> like seriously, how many camps do you go to? <laughs> okay, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you this story. Michael Jordan. Everybody knows who Michael Jordan is, right? Yeah, he was that one guy who dunked the ball. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. That's why I'm not mad. That's me when I was in school. Michael Jordan, when he came into the league, he had to face the Detroit Pistons. I love this story. He used to get beat up and bruised. The tactic was the minute he goes to the hole, beat him up. Michael Jordan spent the whole entire summer, for two summers, in the gym every day. Lifting weights, getting bigger, getting better. He took, I think, 3,000 shots a day to improve his jumper because people said he can only drive to the basket. He was scoring a lot, but they said he can only drive to the basket. 3,000 shots a day to learn how to be a better field, to shoot better from the field. It's called dedication. You want to hear something better? Kobe Bryant. You all know who Kobe Bryant is. Yeah. Kobe Bryant shoots 6,000 shots a day because he wanted to be better than Michael Jordan. You guys know Anthony Davis. Is that the guys from Pelicans? Yes. Anthony yeah. Davis? Yeah. Anthony Davis. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Anthony Davis lost the game. He lost the game. They lost the game by eight points. He missed 10 free throws that game. After the game, he sat there and took 100 shots and didn't leave until he made 100 free throws. A reporter asked him, why did you do that? He goes, I missed... 10 free throws, 10 or 8. We lost by 8 points. Had I made those 10 free throws, we wouldn't have won the game by 2. Dedication. The reason why I asked you about camps, camp shows dedication. So if you're really serious, you need to go to camps this summer. You need to be in a camp every summer. When, it's, when soccer season's over, you need to be playing soccer in the wintertime or whenever the season is. Indoor soccer, outdoor soccer. You need to be playing soccer every time. Like you need to live and breathe it now. And as you get older, because if you really want to be a professional soccer player, that's how you're going to accomplish it.
Just to add in for one second, you talked about Rockstar, and his point was key. What Rock, Rockstar doesn't need another video game player. That's a consumer. They need producers. They need people who help them to stay the best at what they do. So they have millions and millions of people who consume their product. That's not going to prepare you for being a producer. And so that's why his point was very important. It's key that you take that to heart. Definitely. And I, listen. You guys are 14, I was 14, you get bored, you got somebody sitting here telling you, do this, do that, go here, go there. I get it. I, seriously, I get it. It's not a bad thing. So I'm not frustrated by the fact that you guys seem a little bored. I'm okay with that. The, my whole thing about real talk is real talk. I love talking to people at every level. So I want you guys to be enthusiastic and I, got, I want you to embrace whatever passion you have and whatever you want to do in life. I want you to enjoy it and I want you to jump up and say, this is what I'm going to do and I'm going to make it happen no matter what. I want to thank you guys for listening to me. I really appreciate it.